Right, hello and welcome to my very first uh, Twitch broadcast. My name is uh, Joe Robinson and you're on the Digital Eccentric channel. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a video games writer from the UK. I've uh, been covering video games for about six years now, I think, and this is my first foray into Twitch streaming. Uh, it's kind of a huge thing right now, so it's about time I get involved. Uh, I know loads of my friends who may or may not be watching uh, Twitch regularly now, so hopefully I can catch up to you guys and, um, well, see what I can do, really. Uh, just for this test stream, uh, it should only last about 10 minutes or so, just want to see how it holds up. I'm going to be streaming Crusader Kings 2. Uh, it's by a company called Paradox Interactive. It's a grand strategy game. And at the moment I'm trying out their new uh, expansion called the Sons of Abraham. Uh, basically, it's an expansion that focuses on the three main Abrahamic religions or faiths, uh, namely being Christianity, Judaism and Islam. Um, the year is currently, uh, well, 10.08, so I've been playing for about ooh, nearly 200 years worth of games time. Uh, a, previ a previous expansion called The Old Gods uh, set the start date back from 1066 to uh, the middle of the 800s, I think. Uh, so I'm actually coming to the end of the, uh, the kind of new game time and entering into the period where the game would have started in times gone by. And I'm playing the Kingdom of England. Uh, at this time it was uh, ruled by the uh, Anglo-Saxons, still going strong. Um, and given how my games panned out, I, I doubt there'll be any invasions from any pesky Norman princes or Norwegian kings, so hopefully it'll stay Saxon and strong for the rest of the game. Alright, so uh, where am I? Um, yeah, well, uh, as you can see, I've united most of England, uh, pushing into Wales. For some reason, Wales is owned, as you can see, by Castile, uh, which is actually down here. Must have been some marriage thing, I don't know how that happened. Um, I'll deal with them later, I suppose. But yeah, I've also been pushing into Scotland. Uh, yeah, another weird thing was that uh, Countess from Ireland, uh, it's not King, but his mother, Duchess Savorn of Moray, uh, she controlled this central tract of Ireland and a lot of the land in Scotland as well, so you nearly had an Irish Kingdom of Scotland. Um, but yeah, so I've been pushing into that, and I cl actually claimed the title of uh, King of Scotland, so I, I now hold both titles as King of England, as you can see there in the corner. And yeah, it's kind of a, it's a weird game, Crusader Kings. It's a really good game, Crusader Kings 2, but uh, it can get a little bit weird. Essentially, you play as a character, as opposed to an abstract nation or nation, uh, country. And you have basically have to rule your nation and you have to deal with people. So I have a wife, uh, I have an heir, who at the moment is my son. And he's the the Duke of Gwened, which is this kind of border Welsh province here. And, well, as you can see, I've been busy, so I've got a lot of children. Um, but yeah, I also have to deal with uh, vassals as well. So if I look at the vassals tab, I've got a lot of dukes and prom other prominent landowners as uh my vassals and they all have their own wants and needs and ambitions and many of them have tried to take my throne. In fact this current character I'm playing with, King Ethelstan, the drunkard, can't imagine why, um, well he actually first came to the throne when he was uh, only 14 I think, so it's been a long old reign and there was a massive secession crisis when he first came to the throne so basically the whole of the country rebelled against me so I only really held on to this tract of land here which is my own personal lands and everyone else was trying to dethrone me but it was, uh, it was kind of funny actually because there was two separate factions both trying to put their own claimant on the throne and not only were they fighting me they were fighting each other as well so that allowed me to survive that and then push forward with the unification of England uh, but it's when I'm at a time of the game where really I'm only kind of expanding because there's nothing else to do um, obviously uh, slowly but surely I'll take these isles I'll probably push into Ireland and sort of a long term goal They've uh, there's these things called de jure uh, kingdoms, de jure dukedoms which is it basically means that um, you gives you a goal to claim the historical composition of a title. So for example the de jure Kingdom of England is all this land here. So in the start date of this game it was uh, 
866, I think, or something like that. Uh, the kingdom was actually divided into petty kingdoms. You had Wessex, uh, East Anglia, East Anglia, Anglia, sorry, uh, Mercia, and then Northumberland. And so, if you started off as any one of these petty kings, your goal would be to unite England, and you'd have to claim a percentage of the de jure territories, which is these ones, and then basically claim the title. So, if you wanted to form the Kingdom of Wales or Scotland or Ireland, you'd have to take over a percentage of the historical lands that those kingdoms um, held. But uh, in an earlier expansion, they added a bunch of de jure empires, uh, most of which didn't exist. So, as you can see, there's the de jure empire of Britannia. The de jure empire of Scandinavia, you got uh, Russia, which obviously did exist, but not at this time frame. The Holy Roman Empire, which obviously did exist. Francia, which is a slightly bigger France. Don't really know if that really counts, but you got Italia, Byzantinemia, Hispania, and a couple of uh, Muslim and Persian ones as well. Tartaria, whatever that is. Um, so yeah, so I suppose my long-term goal for this game will be to eventually form the Empire of Britannia. Um, but anyway, enough talking in the introduction, I suppose. Let's actually get on with playing. So yeah, there's uh, many things that come up whilst you're, uh, well, whilst you play a typical game of CK2. A lot of things you have to worry about. Obviously, you've got uh, score trackers up here. So this is the amount of money I've got. This is my prestige and piety, which are useful uh, things to get. Prestige means people respect you and they'll do what you want more. Piety means the Pope will sell off your back, which in a very uh, highly religious world is quite useful. And then these are just things like uh, this is how many personal territories I can own, and this right at the end is the overall score for my family, because um, as I mentioned you play characters, but obviously characters live and die. So basically once one dies, your heir, your designated heir will take over, and so you're basically playing, uh, at the moment playing the House of Wessex. Um, and so I can just rack up a score really that will it's kind of just a way of seeing how well you're doing and if uh, if you ever uh, kind of if you click resign and go back to the main menu it will bring up this screen that shows you your score as of when you quit and how that compares to the scores of other houses I think they've just taken famous historical houses and uh, added an arbitrary number to them but it's still a way to see how good you did anyway let's uh, continue playing One of my dukes has inherited a title from someone who must have died. Uh, yeah, he just died. So the Argyle, which is this territory here, now belongs to the duke. So as you have, you have various vassals and and uh, underlings, I suppose. And obviously, if you give them titles like a count or a duke, um, they'll obviously want to pass that on to their own heir. But if no heir exists, um, then the title automatically goes to the liege and um, it depends sort of where in the chain they are. This count was uh, technically a servant of the Duke of the Isles which is this guy here. Even though he was my servant uh, this guy was under him so it actually just goes to uh, Duke Gaul instead of straight up to me. So there's, there's different levels to play with and uh, the king is, apart from the emperor, the king is sort of the topmost level. There's not a uh, not really a lot to do as a king except expand where you can and not lose the kingdom. Um, well, I wouldn't say it's boring but it definitely doesn't take full use of the features you can do. Uh, playing as a duke is quite interesting because it means you can play off against the other dukes and try and steal the kingdom for yourself and playing as a count well, that's basically putting yourself up from the dirt using nothing but a rope really so um, uh, yeah there's definitely lots of interesting levels to this game. Just really waiting for time to tick over, see what happens. What are you doing down here? There might be a bit of lag on the stream, so uh, it's getting a bit bloated now, CK2 in general. Um, I think this is the fifth major content expansion. I mean it wasn't uh, it, it wasn't like Hearts of Iron 3 which is an incredibly ambitious game to begin with. Uh, and it kind of suffered for it really unfortunately especially with all the expansions but this game uh, started off quite modest and sort of built up over time um, but even now 
on my computer I'm starting to feel the strain a little bit I think just gonna spend some money um, now for those of you who are interested the kind of new features that the new features that uh, Sons of Abraham brings to the table um, one of them is the addition of a College of Cardinals feature uh, obviously there are different faiths in uh, in this game and Christianity is one of them and if you play as a Christian nation you have to deal with the Pope obviously and before it was um, it was fairly mild I suppose you had your bishops and they would either like you or they'd like the Pope and depending on who they like more depending who they gave their money to and you could influence that or you could you know you can make an anti-pope if you want and challenge the authority but it was fairly tame but now um, you can get one of your bishops appointed to the College of Cardinals which is this lot here uh, which is kind of useful in itself it stops you getting excommunicated and stuff um, but you know if you're very lucky if your uh, bishop lasts long enough and gets him enough support he can become the preferatus will be the next in line to be the pope and obviously if one of your cardinals becomes the pope that means you have a very special relationship with the pope and it means you can get away with a lot of stuff really not, not forever because that that'd be exploiting but um, you get to do a fair amount uh, you help elect one of your guys to the college of cardinals especially the, the screen here it basically picks out of all your bishops which single one has the best chance of getting appointed really is your best candidate and you basically add money into a campaign fund to increase his score I suppose and then uh, basically the candidate out of all the candidates with the highest score wins so at the moment this guy from the papacy has a score of 941 and so he's the going to be expected to be the next cardinal because he has the highest score um, at the moment I'm oh, I'd spent all my money on other things so I can only put in that much to boost him up to 863 so I have to build up some more money because there's very few instances that I've observed where uh, the score kind of inflates on its own I don't think it decreases with age I think oh no sorry it increases with age yeah um, but yeah that's that one uh, there's not a lot of hugely visible features uh, well Obviously, Judaism as a playable religion has been included. It wasn't in there before. Um, sorry, uh, it wasn't in there mainly because the the Jewish people they they didn't really have a lot of organisation. They were kind of uh, spread around Europe um, as merchant merchantmen and. I know they're in courts and stuff, but uh, they didn't really have any organised centres of power. Um, and but now, obviously, um, in the start game, there's some like counts and step people around here who historically converted to Judaism, apparently, and you can play as them and be Jewish. And if you make your way all the way down here into the Holy Land and take enough of it, you can restore the Kingdom of Israel and install your own religious head and reform your religion and kind of well, really change how history. Uh, actually played out. Uh, Alright, this guy is planning to plot against me, so I'm going to ask him politely, because apparently that's the only option I get to stop. And he said no. What a poo head. This was something that was added a while ago. Um, there's uh Pope's upset with a law of free investiture. Mm, I don't really care who appoints my bishop, so the Pope can appoint them. Um, yeah, a while ago there's this thing called factions. Uh, it was kind of like an expansion of the intrigue system. And essentially, uh, dukes or other people could uh, found factions to get something. So in this case, uh, Duke Robert of the Isles. Uh, he wants independence for the Isles because they're part of Scotland uh, and not England even though I hold both the kingdoms of Scotland and England um, it means that he's less, he's less inclined to follow my lead really especially because King of England is my primary title I can change which title is my primary title if I get in uh, multiple titles of the same level so I could change all this into the Kingdom of Scotland instead of it being the Kingdom of England but I won't because that would be silly uh, but yeah so this guy wants independence